Okay, our next topic is going to be seizure disorders. And when we're talking about board purposes, there's six seizures that we're going to be responsible for. And let's start off with the most common uh, simple type, which is known as simple partial seizures. These are also known as local focal seizures. Now, this can be motor. For example, what we know is a Jacksonian march. These can be sensory where they have patients present with hallucinations. Or these can be psychic, where patients actually have cognitive or affective symptoms. But the main point we want to remember in simple partial seizures is the fact that consciousness is not impaired. So remember, simple partial could be any of them. They can be sensory, they can be psychic, or they can be motor. But the main point you want to remember is that consciousness is not impaired. Now, we're going to treat these patients with phenytoin, valproate, or carbamazepine. But no one drug is better than the other. So if, they're, if you're talking about a drug of choice, it's going to be any one of these three. However, there's one specific circumstance we're going to talk about, but that's a little later on, okay? The next is going to be co complex partial seizures. It's very easy. It's simple seizures with a loss of consciousness. So remember, these can also be hallucinations, psychic, um, affective type of symptoms. They can also be motor okay but the difference here is they're complex so there is a loss of consciousness so these are the type of patients that their movements are going to seem purposeless sometimes and they become aggressive if you try to restrain these patients the treatment is the same it's going to be phenytoin valproate or carbamazepine tonic clonic seizures this is the seizure where this is known as grand mal seizures, okay? Simple partial is also known as local focal. Complex partial is also known as psychomotor. And tonic-clonic is also known as grand mal seizures. Now, how are we going to characterize this? This is the one that has an aura, okay? These patients have a tonic muscular contraction, which is followed by a clonic contraction. And usually this lasts anywhere from two to five minutes. Another thing that's characterized is these are the patients that get incontinence, whether it be urinary or fecal incontinence, and they also get a post-ictal state where the patients have the seizure, then they come and they, they're drowsy, they're confused, they might be sore, they might have a headache. This is a post-ictal state. So you want to remember the aura that happens before the seizure. You want to remember the incontinence, and you want to remember the post-ictal state. And just like complex and simple, they're treated with phenytoin, valproate, or carbamazepine. Now, there is one circumstance. One thing you want to remember, in seizures, most of the anti-seizure medications are actually teratogenic. So what you have to make sure you do is anytime you're treating a patient for seizures, you have to counsel the women on the risks of pregnancy, and um, you have to do a pregnancy test on these patients. Remember, the drug of choice for pregnant women with seizures is going to be carbamazepine. The drug of choice for pregnant women with seizures is carbamazepine. You have to do pregnancy tests and you have to counsel the women about the risks of pregnancy. Next let's talk about secondary seizure disorder. Now this is just like the name itself describes it. It's due to something secondary such as a tumor, a mass for example. It can be secondary to a hemorrhage. It can be secondary to a metabolic disorder such as hypoxia. Uh, phenylketonuria, hypoglycemia, anything metabolic. It can be secondary to drug withdrawal. What kind of drugs can lead to a secondary seizure disorder? Um, drug withdrawal from barbiturates, drug withdrawal from alcohol, drug withdrawal from benzodiazepines, even anticonvulsants, okay? Toxins such as carbon monoxide and lead poisoning, as well as infections such as toxoplasmosis, meningitis, encephalitis, stroke, as well as trauma. So anytime you have a seizure secondary to something else, like the name says, it's going to be a secondary seizure disorder. And obviously you, you have to treat the underlying disorder that's causing the seizures. But remember, if they're acutely seizing, you have to control these acute seizures. And the way to do that is by benzodiazepines, such as diazepam and or phenytoin. Okay, acutely seizing patient, patients have to get benzodiazepines, such as diazepam or and or phenytoin. 
Febrile seizures, remember these patients, it's going to occur between the ages of six months and five years. And you want to remember that the seizure itself happens because of the fever. So once you take care of the fever, the seizure is going to go away. And they only actually have a, a, a slightly increased chance of having a permanent seizure disorder. And usually this, the seizure type is going to be a tonic, clonic, generalized type of seizure. You want to remember, you always have to rule out things such as meningitis in these patients as well. And it usually happens in the pediatric population. You want to give the antipyretic such as acetaminophen in these patients because they're febrile. And remember, it's the febrile illness that's causing the seizure. And finally, we have status epilepticus. This is the type of seizure where you have one seizure following another seizure following another seizure with no intervening periods of consciousness. In the stem of the question, I want you to look for the patient who rapidly withdraws from anti-convulsant therapy. Remember, in status epilepticus, they're continually seizing one after another with no intervening periods of consciousness. So you got to look, look at the airway, make sure they're breathing, and protect that airway. And if that's not an issue, you're going to acutely treat them like you did with um, um, the secondary disorder. Anytime they're acutely seizing, you want to treat them with a benzodiazepine, such as diazep diazepam and or phenytoin. So remember, any acutely seizing patient, you're going to treat them with a benzodiazepine because it, it's going to it's going to work the fastest, okay? So that's uh, the six most common types of seizure disorders that they're going to ask you on the test. I hope you enjoy and you study hard, all right? Enjoy.